Hi everyone, let's begin reliability. Reliability test, basically we would consider three types of consistency in reliability. Number one is over time, that is we can call it test retest reliability. Second one is across items internal consistency. Third one is across different researchers inter-rater reliability. All three types of consistency are entirely different. But before this, first of all, we understand what do you mean by reliability. So here is reliability means which by which consistent results are achieved when we repeat the measurement of something. Let's say we have taken uh, responses today. And after some time when we are going to take these same responses by the same questionnaire, by the same instrument, so that responses must be same. This is known as consistency. This is known as reliability. So a questionnaire used on similar population that produces similar results can be termed as reliable. And consistency of form and manner of asking questions, their wordings, the amount of structure, etc. That generally ensure reliability. And proper training giving to interviewers in a study also improve reliability by reducing variation in the way they ask questions and record answers. But validity is something different and uh, I'm going to share this validity part in my next video. So that at that time, I'm going to share all the types of validity and validity also. You can see here, test retest reliability, internal consistency and inter reliability. For example, there may be an instrument which can measure the number of things a child can recall from his last one day's activity. If this instrument returns the same value when implemented on the same child, it's a reliable instrument. But if someone claims that it is a valid instrument for measuring the IQ level of the child, he may be wrong. This instrument may just be measuring the memory level and not the IQ level of child. So that's what I'm saying. When validity means we are talking about something valid questions that could be related to your problem statement. But reliability means consistency. Whether you are asking right question, I mean related to your problem statement questions or not related to problem statement question, but again and again answer you are getting same. That means your Cronbeck Alpha would be, uh, it could be more than 0.7 or 0.8 and this is reflecting reliable consistency. So validity, it is more important as comparatively to the reliability. So that is why this is the question. If we are measuring reliability, it's not necessary. These questions are valid also. So some of the commonly used techniques for assessing reliability include Cohen Kappa coefficient for categorical data and Cronbeck Alpha for internal reliability of a set of questions that is through which we are going to test reliability. Advanced tense of reliability can be performed using confirmatory analysis. That is the further. So first is we will discuss what do you mean by test and retest reliability. First of all, we are going to take this one is test and retest reliability. This is the, let's say you have taken a set of questions and this set of question would be filled by some identified responses, respondents. You had given the set of question today and they have filled their responses. And after 15 days, again, you are giving same sort of question to your respondent, same respondents. So at that time, answer must be same. It's not possible one respondent who is saying today is for one question, I am strongly agree. But after 15 days for the same question, same respondent, he or she is saying, strongly disagree. It's not possible. Might be possible when he or she has filled this questionnaire first time, at that time he was wrong. Or this time, after 15 days, when he or she had filled that questionnaire, this time he or she is wrong. So this is known as test retest reliability. Means when researchers measure a construct that they assume to be consistent across time. The scores they obtain should also be consistent 
across time. So test and retest reliability is the extent to which this is actually the case. For example, here as you can see, intelligence is generally generally thought to be consistent across time. Yes, it's not because somebody is intelligent today and after 15 days, it's not possible this person will not remain intelligent. Right. So a person who is highly intelligent today will be highly intelligent next week also. This means that any good measure of intelligence should produce roughly the same scores for this individual next week as it does today. So clearly a measure that produces highly inconsistent scores over time cannot be very good measure of a construct that is supposed to be consistent. So that means we can say if we are not getting similar kind of results during this time period, so we can say there is no consistency, means scores are inconsistent. So I hope you understand what do you mean by test and retest reliability. Then we come to the, uh, there is a few statements like assessing test retest reliability requires using the measure on a group of people at one time, using it again on the same group of people at a later time. And then looking at test retest correlation between the two set of scores. This is typically done by graphing the data in a scattered plot or computing the correlation coefficient. And that should be that should be either 0 0.80 or greater than. So then we can say it is indicating, it is reflecting, there is good reliability. So again, high test and retest correlation makes sense when the construct being measured in assumed to be consistent over time, which is the case for intelligence, self-esteem, and the big five personality dimensions. But other constructs are not assumed to be stable over time. The very nature of mood, for example, is that it changes. So a measure of mood that produces produced a low test retest correlation over a period of month would not be a cause of for concern. Might be possible. Today, you are not in good mood and you had filled that questionnaire. But after 15 days or after 10 days or after one week, at the time when you are filling this questionnaire, you are in a very good mood and you are enjoying this filling questionnaire. So that means whatever the response is recording, these are correct responses. So that is why test and retest reliability is very important. Next category is internal consistency. Internal consistency means we are talking about consistency of people's response across the items. Across the item means, let's say, one construct having five items. So we will check first the correlation between all the items. Let's say you have seven questions. Question one, question two, question three, question four, question five, question six, seven. So you have to check all, the question, all seven questions with the all seven questions to the vertically and horizontally, you will check correlation in between all these questions. So that should be greater than 0.8. So that means we can say there is internal consistency, which is the consistency of people response across the items on a multiple time item measure. In general, all the items on such measure are supposed to reflect the same underlying construct. So people scores on the on those items should be correlated with each other if there is no correlation so that means they are not able to define that construct right so here is people who agree that they are a person of worth would tend to agree that they have a number of good qualities if people's response to the different items are not correlated with each other then it would no longer make sense to claim that they are all measuring the same underlying construct so that means we can say, let's say one construct having seven questions and they are not correlated to each other. There is no internal consistency. So we can say, right, there is there, there is no sense, no, no, no longer makes sense. To, we can claim this question is able to define that particular construct. Then we come to the, uh, here is the, some more examples related to internal consistency. This is true for behavioral and psychological measures. As for self-report measure, for example, people might make a series of bets in a simulated game of, uh, here is as a measure of their level of risk seeking. 
The measure would be internally consistent to the extent that individual participants bet were consistently high or low across trials. So like test and retest reliability, internal consistency can only be assessed by collecting and analyzing data. So like this approach, look at the split half correlation. And uh, this involving splitting the items into so how we can measure because difficulty level of the questions you can see from first question to last question. Initial question would be easy and last question would be we are moving towards the difficult questions. So what we have to do, we can divide odd, name, odd number of questions in a one category and even number of questions in a another category. So that means we can say question number one, question number three, question number five, question number seven, they are falling in one category. But question number two, question number four, question number six, eight, and so on, the, uh, these are falling in another category. So finally, what we have to do, we have to check uh, correlation in between both set of questions. So if it is good, this correlation coefficient for these data must be 0.88 or 0 0.80. So it's split half correlation of 0 0.80 or greater is generally considered good internal consistency. Then only we can say there is internal consistency. So this method will prove and last type of reliability is inter-rater reliability. Inter-rater reliability means that means Across the, I had already mentioned here, you can see here, I had already mentioned inter-rater means across different researchers, means across different people. Those are filling this kind of responses. So most common measure of the internal consistency used by researchers by psycho in psychology in a statistic called Cronbeck Alpha. And conceptually, alpha is the mean of all possible split half correlation for a set of items. For example, there are 252 ways to split a set of 10 items into two set of five. And Cronbeck alpha would be the mean of the 252 split half correlations. Note that this is not how alpha is actually computed, but it is it uh, it is a correct way of interpreting the meaning of that statistics. So again, a value of 0 0.80 or greater is generally taken to indicate good internal consistency. And uh, I mean, uh, many behavioral measures involve significant judgment on the part of the observer or a later. Inter-rater reliability is the extent to which different observers are consistent in their judgment. Uh, for example, uh, I'm just taking that example. You want to observe one person behavior. So what we have to do alone, your opinion is not sufficient. You have to ask to some more people. They would also observe that person's behavior. And after that, we can conclude that if you are saying the same thing, right, about that particular person to whom you are observing. So that means there is inter-rater reliability. Here is the, I have taken one example. If you are interested in measuring university students' social skills, so you can make video recording of them as they interact with other students whom they are meeting for the first time. Then you could have two or more observers watch the video and rate each student's level of the social skills to the extent that each participant does student's level of the social skills in fact have some level of the social skill that can be detected by an attentive observer and different observers rating should be highly correlated with each other. So inter-rater reliability would also have been measured in. There is the some kind of Bajura uh, doll study also. In this case, the observer rating of how many acts of aggressions particular child committed while playing with the Bobo doll should have been highly positively correlated. So inter-rater reliability is often assessed using Cronbeck Alpha. And the judgment are quantitative or an analogous static called Cohen's, I mean, when we are talking about the categorical variable. So that's all for the day. I'm sure all these, what do you mean by reliability? That is that is clear to each and every one. And I'm sure all three kinds of reliability when we are talking about across, this one is the across items and across uh, different researchers, inter-rater reliability, internal inconsistency inc and all these kinds of reliability is clear. I hope this video would be helpful. Keep watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.